Hi everyone, my name is Owen Ryan. I'm the president and CEO here at Project Angel Heart and I am beyond excited to welcome you to our first Cooking Together event of 2022. It is really exciting to have everyone back in our kitchen this year. If this is your first Cooking Together event, welcome. If you're joining us again, I'm so glad you're back. This evening, we are joined by two Project Angel Heart All-Stars who are gonna show you the menu that they put together that we cook for our clients that you can cook at home and modify in every way you need. I wanna tell you a few ways that you can participate. So if you have any questions tonight, you can pick the way that's best for you. You can send us a question at info at projectangelheart.org. You can also call us at 303-830-830. 0202. I'll give that to you one more time. 303-830-0202. There is someone who is sitting at an actual phone who will take your call. Push number seven when you get the prompt and you'll get the person you need right there. There's also a chat box on your screen. If you're fluid in chat, by all means, use that tonight. It's so great. I also want to welcome all the Project Angel Heart clients who are joining us tonight. This is one of our first Cooking Together events that welcomes all of our clients on board. Really excited you can all be with us and see the kitchen where it all happens. We are beyond welcome that you're here. So on my left here is our executive chef, Brett Newman. Brett, welcome to Cooking Together 2022. Thanks, Owen. Really excited to be here. Now I'm excited for the menu yeah. you and Astrid have worked on. And here is Astrid De La Cruz, our nutrition services manager and registered dietitian. Hello, Welcome. everybody. Hi, thank you. So I'm excited to be here. This is my first time doing a Cooking Together event, so I'm really excited you're to right. be here. You're right. This is Astrid's first event, so we are excited to welcome her to our kitchen. And the menu you're going to cook tonight, like I said, brings together the science of nutrition and brings together the creativity of our kitchen and our culinary prowess to make an amazing meal. And this is what this team does every day. Folks, you did not join to listen to me ramble on all night. So I'm going to hand the kitchen over to these two. If you have any questions, me and my colleague Christy are going to be looking at the chat box paying attention to everything you need. And these guys are ready to go. Have fun, guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Appreciate yeah. it. All right. Thank you so much. We're really excited to uh, do a meal here in our kitchen. Um, this is a Asian-inspired meal. Um, we basically kind of put our heads together and decided that takeout can be a little disappointing sometimes. And we wanted to kind of ramp it up and give it a little Project Angel Heart twist, add some more veggies, add some more flavor to it. So let's get started. Yeah, that's Astrid. exactly right. And this is what we do in our kitchen here every single day. We take really creative, versatile, simple recipes that we can add ingredients to, remove ingredients, and really make them modifiable to meet your specific dietary needs and your taste preferences. So what are, what are we making? Should we get started? So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. First of all, we're going to be showing you a Asian style steak. We're going to show you how to marinate it. We're going to show you how to make the marinade, show you how to pan sear it or grill it. Um, next, we're going to be doing a fried rice, vegetable fried rice, and then we have some Szechuan green beans as well. Uh, first things first, though, is to get the steak marinating. So, um, so Astrid, I chose the hanger steak for this, um, and I know you got your recipes out there, and there's different substitutions for steaks, but I chose this specific uh, steak because I think it's one of the tenderest, most tender steaks uh, in comparison with like a tenderloin or a ribeye or something like that. This is like second on my list. Also, there's only one on the cow, so it's kind of rare to find at the butcher. Not, um, but if folks don't have steak at home, what else can they use? Yeah, great. You could use chicken breast for this. Uh, you could use tofu if you're a vegetarian. You could also use uh, some cauliflower. You could literally make a cauliflower steak out of this. Use the marinated that is the recipe uh, and marinate that as well. So, um, yeah, let's jump right into this marinade. Um, we have, I have two, two versions of steak here. I have one unmarinated and the other are marinated. And these have been marinating for around 24 hours. That is what is recommended on the recipe, but is not a make or break. So if you haven't done that part yet, no worries. We're gonna do the same thing with these two steaks as well. Uh, we're gonna make the marinade and get them in there for around 15 minutes. So let's start. Hey, Brett and Astrid, I just wanna welcome a whole bunch of folks just joined us just a couple minutes in. Thank you everyone for joining us. The voice you're hearing here is Owen Ryan. I'm the president and CEO of Project Angel Heart. You are joining Cooking Together with two of our all-stars, Astrid De La Cruz, our registered dietitian nutritionist, and our executive chef, Brett Newman. And we are cooking with you tonight. If you're just catching up, no worries. We just got started. This team just started on the marinade. You want a real quick 10 second recap of where you are, Brett? Yeah, absolutely. So we've got one that we've marinated overnight. Um, and then we're also gonna do one live for you as well. So 
about 15 or 20 minutes, let it sit in the marinade, gain some flavor. Um, let's talk about this marinade a little bit. Um, I sent this recipe to Astrid and she modified it for our clients in line with our clients. So it's very low in sodium. Um, it's very low in sugars and all that. So I'm literally using some apple juice here. I'm gonna put that in there. What does the apple juice do to the, to the meat, to the steak? Yeah, great. So it tenderizes the meat and it adds a little bit of sweetness to it, um, which the low sodium soy sauce brings a little bit of the saltiness. So you've got the sweet and salty, but it's not overly sweet without adding any sugar. So gotcha. Yeah. So I'm going to add about two tablespoons of this low sodium soy sauce as well. Well, he adds the low sodium soy sauce. I just wanted to point out that the reason why we use low sodium soy sauce in our kitchen here at Project Angel Heart is because it has about half of the amount of salt compared to regular soy sauce. And so it makes for a really great alternative. If you're following a low salt diet or just a general heart healthy diet, this is a great alternative and it doesn't compromise on the flavor. Am I right? No, I agree. I think you can put them side by side and I think they're equivalent in flavor. Um, yeah, this is just a go to here. Um, I buy it at home. It's actually a little cheaper, I think, as well. So that's good. Uh, so back to this, we've got some, I added some sesame oil, if you were wondering. It adds a lot of nuttiness to it uh, and gives it a great flavor as well. And it also adds a little bit of fat to it. So I'm gonna add some raw onion here. And like, this is a super simple marinade. Um, if you didn't have onions or garlic, it would still be fine. It's not a big deal. Um, I'm excited for this marinade though. I'm a vegetarian and I'm always looking for good ways to add flavor to, to tofu, for example. So I'm really looking forward to see how this turns out. Yeah, it's a great marinade. I think you can marinate pretty much anything. We've done tofu at home in this as well. I know Astra tried this recipe out and did tofu. Yeah, it's great. So we're gonna whisk this up a little bit and then get our steaks in there as fast as possible here. As you can see this beautiful hanger steak we've got. Um, it's got a lot of marbling on it, but it's also pretty lean as well. So we're going to submerge this guy. So if you were using chicken or tofu, you would just do the same thing, right? Yeah, it handle there. it exactly the same way. Yeah, there's no difference whatsoever. Just kind of make sure you pat those down a little bit. You want them to kind of be somewhat submerged. Uh, I'm going to discard my gloves, yep. and we're going to set it and forget it here, everyone. I can set so it while you throw out those gloves Please, you yeah. If you want to set, set that in the back, back here. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So we're going to let that go for around 15 minutes, 20 at the most before we get it on our little flat top here. Um, so in the meantime, let's go ahead and get to the fried rice. Great. Astrid, would you like to bring some of the ingredients? Yeah, over? Okay. please. I'm going to pop this down low. Pardon me. Move over a little bit here. All right. Well, okay. Green beans over here. Looks really beautiful, all the colors. Yeah, absolutely. So I think this was the most disappointing part for me is when I get takeout and I like to get fried rice. It's literally just rice and scallions with over seasoned rice. I wanted to make a rice where we did that was colorful, flavorful and nutritious. So I think I think we narrowed that down and did that. Um, Astrid, so we're using brown rice tonight. At home, I like to use brown rice more so, but when I go out, I notice it's a lot more white rice, like jasmine and stuff like that. Yeah. What is the significance of brown rice over white, or is there? Yes, absolutely. So if white rice are part of your cultural foods, or you just prefer the, the, the taste of white rice, I would say white rice will work perfectly here. But we do prioritize brown rice in the Project Angel Heart Kitchen because it has a lot more fiber, and it has that outer coating still intact, which gives it that brown flavor which means that when you're digesting it, it's gonna happen a little bit more slowly and it'll prevent those really high sugar spikes. So if you're someone with diabetes or you're just trying to uh, manage your blood sugar, that's a really good tip is using brown rice. Fantastic. We've also taken this rice and I made this yesterday. Uh, this is not a make or break of the dish, but in the recipe, you will notice that it works better if the rice was cooked a day at a time. And the point of this is, you were talking to me earlier about it, is that it sits and it dries out and then it makes it more absorbent. So it's gonna absorb all these flavors that we have in there. All this lime juice and this low sodium soy and this rice wine vinegar, it's gonna really soak up all this flavor. Oh, hey guys, got we've something? got a question coming in about steak. They're 
wondering kind of where hanger steak comes from, if you know what part of the cow, or are there other cuts of beef you can use, anything you like that's an alternate to the cut you're using tonight? Absolutely. They call it the hanger steak because there's only one on there, and it actually hangs from the upper belly of the cow. There's only one. The skirt steak is right next to it, and there's only one of those as well. That would be an another good option. Um, flank steak is great as well. That's going to be the back portion of the cow towards the belly as well. Um, so those three I would recommend for this recipe and maybe strip steak as well. So, yeah. That's great. We also have a question coming in for Astrid. Astrid, folks are wondering why you picked this tonight and how this works in client's diets. What, what do you like about this menu? So I particularly enjoy the fried rice aspect of this dish because it's so versatile. I think that fried rice, there's a version of a rice dish in most cultures. And it's, you know, it's a good way to get creative and experiment with different veggies. So I like, this might be a little bit controversial, right? But I like to get creative and use bok choy, mushrooms, um, zucchini. Really the sky is the limit here with whatever veggies you have laying around. I also like to make this easy for people. So if you're someone who has uh, frozen veggies in your freezer, this is a good opportunity to just toss it in. If you're getting home from work and you're exhausted and you don't want to chop three or four different kinds of veggies, um, just toss in a bag of frozen veggies, right? Yeah, absolutely. Great point, Astrid. Um, this is a clean out the fridge sort of dish, as I like to put it. Uh, you have leftover rice. We all eat rice. Uh, if you have any leftover rice, this is an opportunity for you to take that. Um, you could add some bacon to this. You could add just red bell peppers. Basically, anything you want can go in this fried rice. That's why it's so great. So, yeah. Absolutely. Um, and these ingredients that we chose, we chose some aromatics. We've got some chopped onions here, uh, which we're going to add first here in a second. Um, we also have some carrots as well. And the reason I chose carrots is they're crispy. They have a lot of texture and the flavor as well and the color. Uh, and then we have some bell peppers, which adds a lot of color to it as well. I guess you could use green, yellow, or orange, but red's kind of my favorite. Is red more nutritious, or is it? It just means that it's matter? been ripening for a little bit longer. So it has similar nutritional value compared to other uh, bell peppers, but I love red bell pepper too. Um, it's one of my favorites as well. It has more of a sweetness to it, I think. Yeah. And it's packed with vitamin C, so it's a great option. So I agree. I agree with the sweetness. Yeah. We've also got some garlic and ginger fresh as well. We're going to add that in there. We've got some lime juice for acidity, fresh squeezed lime juice, uh, scallions for color and flavor as well, which I love. And then we're going to be adding some low sodium soy sauce and some rice wine vinegar. So a lot of stuff going into this rice. If you don't have one of these ingredients, no problem. You could literally take out the bell peppers. You could take out the rice wine vinegar. It's not a make or break. It's still going to be delicious. So and I know before tonight's event, a few folks wrote with surprise about the fact that we're able to put uh, veggie fried rice as part of a nutritious menu. And uh, Astrid, I know you put a lot of work into the macros for folks who are interested are all posted on our website. Yes. You can go to projectangelheart.org. The Cooking Together event is at the top of the banner. You can see the macros. Talk a little bit about, you, you talked before about why you like fried rice. What about this whole menu works for our clients, works for you? Yes, I would say that this menu is specifically tailored for our clients. We've modified the salt content with using the low sodium soy sauce. All of the ingredients can be easily modifiable to meet the different dietary needs of our clients, which is why I really like it. If you're working with, for example, a ginger or a garlic, which has pretty strong flavors, um, you can easily omit those if you're, if you're following a bland diet, for example. For clients at home who might be living with uh, going through chemotherapy or who have family members that are going through chemotherapy, you might be really familiar with the altered taste that comes with that treatment. And so don't be afraid to limit those ingredients that you know are going to be a little bit too strong, like the onion, the garlic, all of that. So Fantastic. Yeah. And I add a lot of onions and, and excuse me, garlic and ginger to pretty much everything. Yeah. Uh, is there health benefits here? I, I do it because I like the flavor, but... They're super good for immunity, um, and they, like you said, they add a lot of flavor. They kind of create a lot of heat in the body, so I, I also cook with them a lot. But I would say, yeah, if, if you're following a bland diet, you can definitely avoid those. Fantastic. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and get this rice started. It takes just a few minutes here. Uh, we're going to get our pan pretty hot. So I'm using a wok tonight. Don't uh, feel like you're failing if you don't have this wok. I was fortunate enough to have this in-house. Could easily Brett, there's use a question this. coming in around, can you sub the rice vinegar or just leave it out? You could leave it out, yeah. You could totally leave the rice wine vinegar out. You could substitute mirin, cooking sherry, 
or just water. We actually have some veg stock that we make in house, Project Angel Heart vegetable stock. Um, you could sub that as well if you had your own vegetable stock or chicken stock or just leave it out altogether. It's not a big deal. Um, I would recommend a little acidity for this. So if you have lime juice or a lemon or something like that, it'd be a good alternative as well. So, cool. so we're going to let this get hot here. Astrid, you want to add me two or three tablespoons of that yeah. canola oil? Just kind of coat that. Yep, perfect. Is that a good right. amount? A little, a little bit, more? bit more. That's perfect there. Yeah. Basically, we're going to get this kind of hot. So we're going to start with our onions. And what we're looking for with these is basically a building block for flavor. So these onions, uh, we want to saute these, we want to get caramelization on them, we want them to be a little translucent. So to do that, we want to get our pan hot first. So we're just going to wait for a second here. Um, we're getting there, it's pretty quick. And if you're at home, I would recommend maybe medium to medium high heat. You don't have to go full blast. You don't want to be smoking your house out. <laughs> Will you see actual smoke when it's ready? You, okay. you will see a actual smoke. We're going to do that later with the green beans, though. So, gotcha. But with this, we just want to get a good saute on it. You can see the oil starting to shimmer. Yep. So we're getting that going. Good way to test is just toss one in. If you hear that noise, which you can hear, that's a good sign. So we're going to add this. It's up to you if you want to add them all. We are going to add all these onions. Great. Actually, do you notice that when you're getting fried rice, you're getting substance like this that it's never enough vegetables yeah so i think this recipe it calls for four cups of rice i'm actually only going to use around three cups you don't you can use the four if you want but i'm going to substitute with more vegetables i almost want a 50 50 ratio vegetable to rice maybe 60 40. Um, I just feel like it adds so much more texture, nutrition, and it's just more flavorful so yeah it's nice to have that crunch of the the absolutely. carrot yeah absolutely yeah, um, here, I'm Are you grab... looking for some browning in the onions Yeah, here, so yeah. you don't really want to need to touch it right yet, but you can see the caramelization here. You want to get in there. We're getting there. Yeah, that looks good. Kind of cook it a little bit, move it around. This is really putting that foundation for your, your fried rice. So I'm going to let this cook for a second. I'm going to give you the spoon if you don't mind yeah. holding that. Thank you so much. And next, we're going to be adding our carrots. So carrots can be a bit crunchy, a bit tough. You want to add these and cook these a little bit just so they're softened. But I don't know about you, but I personally like mine crispy. So yeah. we're going to cook these just until they're golden brown. So maybe a minute or two. Great. Yeah. Um, so we've got these colors in here. Um, is there any benefit nutrition wise with these colors, red, orange, things like that? There's a lot of um, beta carotene. So yeah, colorful vegetables have a lot of nutrients and vitamins. So for sure, I always say eat the rainbow, right? And that's pretty cliche, I think at this point, but I think it's fun. And if you're able to incorporate different colors when you cook, I think that more nutrition benefits. So it's great. I love that. Yeah. And I know you talked about this before, but we have a few more questions. Somebody called in about red meat um, and thinking that they really need to uh, limit red meat in their diet. Tell me how you approach that, Astrid, when you're cooking and preparing yeah. Sorry about our menu. That. Yeah, so red meat. I mean, we prioritize lean protein here in the Project Angel Heart Kitchen. So we use things like chicken, fish, turkey. Um, so that's going to be the majority of the meals that are going out to our clients. But we do send out red meat. We send out uh, pork and beef meals as well, um, usually about a couple of times per week. And we never want you to be afraid of food, right? So there's definitely room in the diet um, to incorporate all of those different foods. So definitely you can, you can add that in. And Brett, what are you looking for as the as you go through the steps here that tell you it's time to add more vegetables? Yeah, great question. So basically what we're looking for with the onions, like I said, you want the caramelization. Um, you want that. So if you can see the bottom of the pan here, if you could get in here, there is some color there. That is called fawn. That is just flavor building up mm. from the sear of the onion. So we want that as more of a foundation and a good start for flavor. The carrots, more so for color and crunch. Um, so we're just going to lightly cook those. Maybe and for it's already smelling so good. I hope oh, you guys yeah. could be in here. And if you're hearing the noise there, that's kind of what you want to hear. Um, that was really impressive, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, if your pan's on and you're not hearing noise, yep, you're not getting as much flavor as you want. So crank that burner up. Not too high, but definitely not too soft as well. So yeah. let that go for a second. Great. Here, I'm going to turn this over to you for yeah. one second. Give it just about 10 seconds and then give it another give stir. Give it another stir, okay. Please, yeah. So our next ingredient is going to be our bell peppers. 
this is going to cook really, really fast. So I personally like a little texture in my pepper. Um, the more you cook these, the, le the less colorful they'll become. So we're going to toss these in here in about a minute or so and just saute these lightly for maybe a minute. And then we're going to follow with our ginger and our garlic. So mm -hmm. yeah, let that go. Give me one more stir. Team, we just had it. another call come in. It's actually really sweet. We had a client calling who just wanted to send some love for the work that you both are doing. It was a really sweet call. Just want to make sure you see there's a lot of love coming in for all the work you do every day for everybody. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, so we're going to add these bell peppers now. Ask her to give, another give stir. me a stir, all please. Right. Yeah. All right. Looking good. So we we're have cooking. Folks asking about, you know, if you don't have some of these ingredients, can you just skip through the line? Like if you don't have onions, can you move to carrots, etc.? Absolutely. Like I said, it's a clean out the fridge sort of dish. If you don't have the onions, throw the carrots in there first. They're going to take the longest to cook. If you don't have onions or carrots, throw your peppers in there first, followed by your garlic and your ginger. There's really no wrong or right way to do this. Um, like I said before, you're building flavor, so you want to caramelize some of those vegetables. But as far as bell peppers and carrots, a quick sear. Let's get the other aromatics in there, the ginger and the garlic, and then the rice. So, yeah. Awesome. Um, like she was saying, too, if you have any frozen peas, frozen broccoli, spinach, anything like that, it's always great to throw in here as well. Uh, this is kind of a catch-all fried rice. You don't necessarily need to have scallions and eggs and things like that in there. You can do it anything. It's fun. It's a fun dish. It's a clean out the fridge sort of fun dish. So, which reminds me, if you uh, were vegetarian, for example, and you wanted to add some extra protein and make this more of like an egg fried rice, when would be a good time to add add eggs, for example? Yeah, great question. So, you could kind of spread this out as I'm doing now. Add some oil in there and crack an egg in there right now and kind of scramble it. Or oh. you could scramble eggs in a nonstick pan beforehand and just add those into a cup. So something like this and then add those in there with the rice because they're already cooked so mm -hmm. you wouldn't need to cook them anymore so yeah great yeah. question yeah so as you can see here we've got some caramelization we've got a lot of color on all these vegetables we want to keep that color we want to keep that crunch so now it is time for the ginger and the garlic great we're going to add about a tablespoon of both give it a stir give me a stir please yeah and this goes really quick so there is a make or break here. You do not want to burn your ginger and garlic, so be aware of that. As Astrid is stirring constantly, that's a good indication that uh, it's going to caramelize. It's about a half, 30 seconds to a minute to cook this. Yeah, it makes it a little bit bitter if you overcook the garlic, no? Or... Oh, absolutely. Yeah. If, if you burn the garlic and the ginger, it's really going to be bitter. So be quick with it. Um, now we can add our rice. We're going to do this kind of fast here. So we'll just go ahead and add that all. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Kind of spread that out a little bit. We're on the edges. Yep. There you go. Nice. So we're spreading awesome. that out. If you don't mind, More, take yeah. this. Yeah, just a little bit. Basically, what we want to do here is the rice is really dry. So right now, it's even drying out even more as it's cooking. So you can see the bottom of that pan as it's starting to get dark. That's from the starches of the rice hitting and that's a good sign because that is really going to build a lot of flavor so let's stir that out a little bit i just want to remind our home cooks who are joining us that if you join late or you missed a step or you feel like you didn't get something clear that we are going to send this video out to everyone who registered um, so make sure if you haven't registered with us you can send us your name and email or even just your phone number to info at projectangelheart.org if you want to follow up from this with Brett or Astrid, or you have any questions for the rest of us here, again, info at projectangelheart.org, or we have folks who are on the phone tonight, 303-830-0202. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so it's time now. Let's add, let's add up all our liquids here. All Astrid, right. if you wouldn't mind adding some low-sodium soy sauce. Sure. Let's go, I'm going to add some lime juice. Let's go two to three tablespoons. Look good. That's perfect. A little bit. Right. Yeah, that's perfect. We're gonna add some lime juice to it for acidity. Would you give me some rice wine vinaigrette as well? Yes. And for those of you at home, if you're cooking this, if you want yours a little saltier, add a little more soy sauce. If you want it a little acidic, add some more rice wine. So now you can see it kind of deglazing here. You can see the liquid. So this is nice looking fried rice. That looks yeah, so scraping good. Scraping the bottom here. 
So, Team, we have one more question coming in. A little in. bit Folks, stock about, here as well. I'm sorry, Brett, keep going. No, fine, please hit me with a question. One more question coming in about whether this dish is safe for babies or for kids or thinking about little ones who are at home and maybe modifications to make this more kid-friendly. Yeah, I guess it would depend, from my perspective, it would depend on how old um, the children are. I would say if it's babies, obviously if they haven't been introduced to like solid food, that this would not be appropriate. Um, but if your child is eating solid foods at this point, I would just maybe try and omit some of the strongly flavored ingredients here so that they can still eat it. Um, we are using like spices, you know, like um, red pepper flakes at some point and stuff like that. So you probably want to avoid those if you're serving small children. So John's saying he's got a two-year-old at home. So take out some of the, maybe the ginger, the larger amounts of garlic, make exactly. it a bit more palate friendly. Absolutely. But yeah, they should be totally fine to eat rice and veggies for sure. Yeah. Good question. Great question. Yeah. So and as you said, that palate friendly stuff is something you do all the time, particularly yes. for folks who are going through chemo, making this, we have a bland diet here at Project Angel Heart, making this easy for folks who need a really simple palate. Yes, we do have a bland diet. Um, I always try and encourage clients to play around with flavors at home. So our bland diet goes out and it's super simple. But if folks, you know, feel a little bit more comfortable, added a little bit of lemon juice or maybe some herbs or something like that, that can be a good way to add a little bit more flavor. But you control it, right? So you know exactly what's going on there and you can limit the amount to, to make it more palatable. So, yes. Fantastic. So you can see this is kind of a finished product here. For those of you cooking at home, no matter where you're at, I would recommend trying at this point to see if you would want to add a little more sodium, if you want to add a little more acidity, a little more herbs. We are cooking in line with our clients, so the recipe that we did here is kind of perfect. So I'm going to set this aside. Ask you're going to grab in that handle and yeah, kind of setting it over it there. For now. We're going to plate that later. All right. Yep, it'll stay nice and hot in the wok. So fantastic. What's next? Next, we're going to get our steak that we marinated, which I have back here. Let's go ahead and get these steaks going. So these have been going about 15, 20 minutes, give or take. Um, these over here obviously have went overnight for 24 hours. We want to get these out of the marinade and get them on our grill. Um, this particular grill takes around 10 to 15 minutes and then another five minutes of resting. So um, if you have an outdoor grill, it's probably going to be a little faster. Um, so perfect you, for summer, right? If you want to grill out. Yeah, if you want to grill these out, recipe. these are going to be faster. Yeah. Um, so we're going to take these out of the marinade. I like to put mine on a towel and kind of dry them out a little bit. Um, the one thing you don't want to do is get a hot pan or a hot skillet or a grill and have a wet piece of steak on there because it's just going to stick. It's going to tear. So let's dry these out a little bit. And as you can see, the color difference. If... And Brett, why do you want to dry them out? Just to kind of soak up a little bit of that excess liquid? Or... Yeah, yeah, soak up the liquid. It's going to pop a lot whenever oil and water together. Oh, sure. It's going to pop yeah. a lot. So, um, yeah, you want to get these dry. It's going to give you a better sear as well, mm -hmm. more caramelization, yeah. more flavor. So if you can get the camera over here and check this out. So we've got our steaks that have marinated for 24 hours right here on my right side and then we've got the 15 minutes you can see the difference in color they absorbed all that apple juice and all that uh, low sodium soy sauce and those aromatics as well so either way is fine if you haven't done that i just wanted to do a little bit of both so we're going to pat these down really dry hey brett and astrid we've got someone who is having a little trouble getting a question through so okay if that person can hear me please what we're working on i can tell you the best way if you're trying to to speak through Astrid, the zoom the better way to oil, get please? us is to call our phone you? number i'm going to say it one more time thank it's you 303-830 zero two zero two and we're going to put that number on the bottom of the screen you. you can push number seven when you get through we can also put it in the chat sorry if you're having trouble with the zoom i know we had some audio stuff early on a bunch of questions coming through if you're someone who's joined us a little bit late um we are we finished our veggie fried rice looks and smells amazing i hope your kitchen smells as great as ours does and Brett has just moved on to cooking the marinated steak. So we're going to hand it back to you, and we'll see if we can help this person who's got some questions. Fantastic. So all I'm doing here is putting it on my, my little flat top. 
Like I said, if you do not have one of these, you can use a pan like this as well and do it directly on the burner. Just get it kind of hot, get it kind of smoky, um, or else it will stick. Or just take it outside to your grill, which I would recommend that process over anything. Um, I want to give you a little fun facts here on hanger steaks. They're actually, nickname is called the butcher steak. Um, and they call it the butcher steak is because the butcher, when he would fabricate the cow back in the day, he would actually keep the hanger steak and not sell it because that's how delicious it is. So, mm. yeah. That's a fun tip. Fun tip, right? <laughs> so we're going to put this away. Basically, you're just going to set it and kind of forget it here. I'm going to get rid of my glove. So these need to cook for a little bit. I'm going to turn my temperature down to around something and just let these go. Are we looking um, for a particular temperature for these, Brett, at home? Yeah, so if you're cooking these internally, my recommendation uh, would be around 125 to 130 degrees, 30 degrees internally, which is around a mid-rare to medium. Um, any less than that would be a little rare, but you're welcome to, to cook them well done and mid-well. They're still going to taste great, especially the ones that have been marinating for 24 hours. So... I'm going to join the party with Come on over, the Owen. folks here. This looks amazing. I, you know, I said it behind the camera, but this veggie fried rice smells amazing as well as the steak. I hope you're enjoying cooking along with us. Again, there are many ways that you can ask your questions. Our phone number came up at the bottom of the screen. We'll put it up one more time. 303-830-0202 and push seven. Kaylee is waiting to answer your call. Christy is also monitoring the chat box if you've got some questions in chat. We are amazed by the number of people we have joining us tonight. This is really, really great to have everyone here. You can also send an email to info at projectangelheart.org. Kaylee is keeping an eye on that inbox. My name is Owen Ryan. I'm president and CEO of Project Angel Heart. I'm so delighted that you've joined our kitchen to cook tonight. I just wanted to take a moment to pump up these two all-stars next to me. You have seen how dynamic and amazing this meal is. They work together to make this meal for all of you to get the menu together. Uh, I said it earlier, but it combines the science of nutrition with the creativity of the culinary arts and we make amazing meals here at Project Angel Heart. But they don't just do that for all of you. They do this for clients across the state of Colorado every single week. This year, we are committed to making 620,000 meals for people living with severe illness across Colorado. That means folks living along I-25, folks on the Western Slope, folks on the Eastern Plains. We make sure our meals get to the folks who need it wherever they live. If you wanna be part of that, we need volunteers all the time. You can learn more at projectangelheart.org. If you can decorate a bag, if you can come help us cook in our kitchen, you can come package meals or deliver. We would love your help. If you can sponsor meals, it costs about $70 for delivery every single week to our clients. We would love your help in supporting these meals. You can support us at projectangelheart.org. And all of that support goes directly to the work you see here that Astrid and Brett and their teams do every single day. Yes, I just wanted to pump you guys up. You don't pump yourselves up enough, so that's what I'm here for. Thanks, so well done. Thanks. This looks amazing. What's coming up next? So coming up next, we're going to kind of let these go for a little bit. You kind of want to keep an eye on them. You don't want to burn them, but you definitely want some caramelization. You can see there I've got a nice crust on it. That's a lot of flavor. So we're just kind of letting these go. Um, and it also depends on the way you're cooking them. If you have the outdoor grill, you want to go with the grill marks and really try to get those dark grill marks for that nice flavor. So I'm going to continue to flip these. And these will go probably another 8 to 10 minutes at most. So... Next, we awesome. are. You guys are on it. We'll leave you to it. Back to questions. Cool. Remember, you can put questions in the chat box. Thanks, Owen. We got the green beans coming up. So it's green bean time. All we're going right. to let these go while we're doing our green beans. I think we're doing all right on time. All right. So I've got my pan here. We're going to be doing some Szechuan green beans. Astrid, cool. here's some green beans here. Yes. Garlic like and ginger, okay, cool. yep, some scallion. Astrid, while well, you're setting that up, we had a question come in about canola oil and why canola oil is part of this and what its benefit might be. Yes, so canola oil um, is actually really high in omega-3 fatty acids. Um, and those are fatty acids that our bodies don't make, and so we must get them from food. Um, omega-3 fatty acids are really great for brain health, for eye health, overall, you know, general well-being. And so that's a really great alternative to things like butter, um, or other saturated fats. So that's what we typically use in the kitchen, and that's what we're using today. So it's a really good good oil. Mm -hmm. Great. And Brett, what temperature are you cooking the steak on, medium high? Yeah, it's medium high right now. So if you have a burner, you don't want it to be popping on you, but you want it hot enough where it's getting a sear. As you can see, the sear is here. 
what you want. This is probably different than what you're cooking with at home, and that's okay. I'm using this because it's super easy for me to cook a demo on TV and actually get the steak properly. So yeah. very successful. Um, and so you're just moving amazing. these around. Yeah. Can't wait to eat. All right. Maneuver that steak. Astrid, would you mind? We're going to go ahead and get this burner going for our Szechuan green beans. All right. Um, so I chose this dish because I really like green vegetables. I like crispy vegetables. Um, and I like the combination of green beans, um, sesame oil, excuse me, yeah. low sodium soy sauce, garlic, ginger, those sort of things. I really like that combination. Um, but if you wanted to do something different at home, you could use bok choy, you could use broccolini. Um, there's tons of other vegetables. You could use mushrooms if you wanted. Yeah, these are really beautiful though. I love, I love green beans. I think that they're full of fiber. They're packed with calcium if you're vegetarian or vegan and they're looking for calcium sources, this is a good one. Um, so I'm excited to, to make these. Yeah, absolutely. We wanna get our pan hot. Okay. If you would mind, go ahead and add some canola oil. Go ahead and hit me with two to three tablespoons. All right. Kind of coat that pan really well. Beautiful. And basically what we're looking for here is to get this pan hot enough where we see a smoke come off this oil. So a smoke point. And that smoke point is going to give us a lot of flavor. We want to get these green beans really, really charred on one side. Not overly cooked where they're shriveled up and, and cooked to nothing. But we want them to be crispy, but we want to incorporate that flavor because we're not putting a lot of sodium in it. Um, we're not going to be putting any sort of butter or anything like that in it. So all of our flavor is going to become from cooking. You know, I often get questions from clients about um, whether or not cooking vegetables sort of um, decreases the nutrient quality or the nutritional value of vegetables. So I always like to tell people that it really kind of depends on the vegetable. But for the most part, actually cooking vegetables can release some of the nutrients that are found in veggies. So cooking is good and actually sauteing is a really great way to maintain um, some of that nutritional value of them. You just don't want to overcook them, right? You don't want them to get really soggy. Um, and I know you hate soggy vegetables, so. Yeah, is, is it true though? Like the more you cook a vegetable, like the less nutrition it's in it? Or if, it's, if it's soggy, then it's probably lost a lot of its nutritional value, yes. Okay, so yeah. don't overcook your vegetables. Yeah, Plus, you don't want no soggy one likes veggies. mushy vegetables, so I don't anyways. Exactly. So, yeah. um, so look at Astro, we almost get a smoke point there. Yes, you're kind of looking it. for that. And if you're at home here, you want to see your oil sh shimmer a little bit and you want to see the smoke just come off the top of the oil a little bit. So yes. wait for that moment and then we're going to add our green beans in there. Cool. And I want to remind folks as you're watching tonight, if you love this Cooking Together event, we have many more planned for this year. So you can sign up to get our emails at projectangelheart.org. I also want to say we recently expanded our program. So we are now delivering meals from Boulder County, Weld County, down through Metro Denver to Colorado Springs and Pueblo. If you know folks who could benefit from our program, that's someone who is severely ill living at home who needs nutrition to feel better. We serve folks with congestive heart failure, cancer, HIV, AIDS, renal failure, please refer them to us. We want to be able to serve people in need across the state of Colorado. And so you can find out more projectangelheart.org, or you can call our number and leave a message with our client yeah. services team. who will be sure to connect with anyone in need. Looks like Fantastic. the oil's ready, right? Looks like we're good. You can see All the right. smoke. I'm going to ask you to go ahead and add, add that right. green beans away from you so you don't Sorry. splash yourself. Yep, let's give them a shake. And this part of the process, just kind of let them sit there and gain flavor. I'll show you here in about 30 seconds how we're going to get char on those green beans. So don't try not to touch them too much. Okay. Astrid, I'll give you the word. Um, All right. So next, we're going to go with uh, our garlic and our ginger. Like I said before, it's going to cook super, super fast. So we've got about a 30 second to a minute uh, timeline before these will burn. So we're going to go in just a second here. Yeah. And Checking we do send sticks. out plain green beans with a lot of our meals. Um, so this is, you know, really great tips if you're looking for ways to add more flavor into vegetables, um, adding garlic, ginger, some spices. Um, so hopefully this will give you some ideas of how to do that at home. Yeah, absolutely. So Astrid, just breaking in here, I got one of my steaks that appears to be really close to being done. So I'm going to pull this guy here in a second. All right. These two are going to be last, and then this guy will be right after that. So... Perfect. So we want to pull this guy and really have him rest. And resting is basically 
letting those juices redistribute themselves in the meat. If you were to cut this now and go ahead and carve it, you would lose all the juice. Mm. So it's so hot, you're gonna lose all those juices. So yep. So let that let this guy rest for a couple of minutes. And that Just one's rest. a little bit thinner, that's why, right? You're not yeah, it's a little ones. thinner, yeah. so it, it's ready to come off. Gotcha. Um, and like I said, if you wanna cook this rare, that's fine, all the way to well. I, I recommend somewhere in between, yep. a mid-rare, medium to mid-well. Great. So we're going to let those go for a second. All right, Astrid, if you want to take your tongs, kind of take one of those guys up. Pick one up. Yeah, pick this guy up right here. Get the camera See over if I can here. Get it. Yeah, give him a grab. That's a bad one, maybe. Have this guy right here. This guy right here. So if he you went in with the gloves, here, guys. I went in with the gloves. Brave. It's definitely hot, but don't do that at home. So, <laughs> so if you can see this color on, that's what we want. Our green bean is still nice and crisp, but it has that caramelization on there, which is that carbon and adds all that flavor. So without adding any of that extra fat, yeah. extra sodium or anything. So oh, you feel free to go ahead and give those a toss. Toss, please. okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. We're gonna take this guy off here. Oh yeah, that's looking really good. Look at that beautiful color there. Hey, oh, yeah. Brett. There you go. So, there's a question yes. there's a question coming in about how we know when it's time to take the steak off of the heat. What's time to take the steak off is whenever however you want it cooked. So if you've got good color and you have a probe thermometer at home um, and you want like a mid rare, go ahead and pull it off at 125 to 130. If you want a medium, 135 to 140, and then so forth for mid well, 140 to 145. Well done being 150 to 155, taking it off. So, um, and, and remember, once it rests, it's gonna continue to cook. So I'm gonna pull this guy off. This is about a mid rare right here. And you know what? We're just gonna pull all these guys off here because I like mine all rare to mid rare and medium. So let those guys rest. rest. And you guys just missed it, but he did the chef toss. Can you can you do it again? We're gonna me, do Brett? it again. Astrid, do you mind adding, <laughs> adding about a teaspoon, yeah. a tablespoon of garlic and ginger, please? All right. Astrid, yeah. can you say again what you're adding there? Sorry, Owen, what was that? Can you say one more time what you're adding to the pot? Oh yeah, we're adding a little bit of ginger and a little bit of garlic, so about a tablespoon of each. Um, but again, if you're if you're sensitive to these flavors, just just limit those. Smells really good. So, yeah, this is the part where you need to go quick. So the garlic and ginger are gonna burn yep. um, if you take too long. So as you can see, our green beans have a lot of caramelization on it, but they're still crispy. It bends and it still snaps. It's a good sign. What else do we wanna add? So we wanna add our low sodium soy sauce All right. and our rice wine. Make sure you get that garlic and ginger. So go ahead and hit me with a couple tablespoons of that. A touch more, perfect. Some and vinegar. We've got rice wine, yeah. And we're also right. going to add some of these chilies as well. So I've got some um, red pepper flakes for that spice. The combination of red pepper flakes and garlic really gives it that Szechuan feel. So let's give it a pinch of that. Now we're just doing a pinch, but if you're at home and you want it really, really spicy, go ahead and add more to it. So um, I've also got some sesame seeds as well. We toasted these beforehand. They add a nice, nice nuttiness to it. Go ahead and yes. take that off. So you can add those in there. Plus they look really good, so. Yeah. Look Brett, that. while you're doing that, can you talk about why we rest the meat? Yeah, let's talk a little more about why rest the meat. Ask you if you mind pulling that off for me and setting that Should aside. Should I dish those up or not? Yeah, go ahead and yeah. start dishing up. All yeah, right. absolutely. I'm gonna set this here, be careful. All right. So. The importance of resting this meat, um, super important. So if I were to take this off, this one's probably ready. You can see all these juices that are leaching out of this meat. Whenever meat is hot, you gotta give the chance to, for the juices to redistribute. If they don't redistribute in the meat, you're gonna lose it all and it's gonna dry out. So that's the importance of letting it rest and cool just slightly. So um, good rule of thumb is I don't know, for a pound of meat, maybe five to 10 minutes. In this case, this is six ounce cuts. So one to two minutes is totally fine. So this one is kind of rested up here. I'm gonna go ahead and carve this one in a second, followed by the next one. All right, I'm gonna get these out of the way. Thank you. Ask yeah, you. Here, I'm gonna pass look how beautiful that plate. looks, everybody. Looks great. Yeah. So let's go ahead and plate that brown rice as well. Yes. 
And Astrid and Brett, can you show us that plate one more time? Yeah. Yes. Green Please. beans here. Over there. Hand it over. So you can see the texture there for all the caramelization on there. We've also got the sesame seeds in there and the chili flakes. And if you really like it warm, I also have some chili garlic. This is some dried chili, some toasted garlic with some oil. So we're just going to do a little bit of that too, because Astrid and I like spicy stuff. Yes, we do. So let's do that. And it adds a great color to it as well. You can get this at any market. You can make that at home. It's super simple. So pop that over there. I'm going to just take that and pop that on the back table. Yeah. Um, and the fried rice here. I think a good way to garnish this would be some green onions. We really pride ourselves here of uh, making sure that our clients really right. receive restaurant quality really beautiful food it's it's not only nutritious and medically tailored but it's also really appealing right because we eat with our eyes we want things to be really um, beautiful and appealing to our clients so no abs absolutely so everything here is colorful uh, it's nice texturally it's very nutritious um, and the flavors are on point though so we had um, a question come in about yeah. the cooking sherry that's in the recipe you can leave that in add it if you're going to use it when should you use it yes we didn't use it tonight um you can use it though, it adds a good acidity as well. Um, it adds a alcoholic sort of um, aroma as well. So that is good if you have that. You could use white wine as well. So there's some options too. And we um, used what, rice vinegar? Is that what we used to use? Rice, wine, yeah. vinegar, yeah. Uh, vegetable stock in the rice, rice, wine, vinegar, and low sodium soy sauce. So yeah, let's Beautiful. go ahead and plate this guy up here. So we're gonna do another plate. We've got some accompaniments here. So as you can see, I've got some lettuce here made for lettuce wraps. We've got some vegan kimchi, and we've got some of the chili garlic as well. And then I've also got some Asian style hot sauce. Sriracha is fine if you have that. Any sort of hot sauce that uh, is Asian related usually works for this dish. So we're gonna use that as well. You know, it's a really great idea. I've never seen um, lettuce wrap being used in a fried rice, but I think it's nice, fresh, crunchy element to no, put the rice in. Absolutely. I just yeah. think it really gives a different component than just using a fork and knife here and green beans and rice and all that. You really get to pick this up. And I really like the crispiness of this with the saltiness and uh, sweetness of the steak. So yeah. we're going to go ahead and carve this. As you can see, we've got these lines going through the steak. If I can get the camera to come over here. You got these lines. These are called grains of the steak. And I could carve this this way. If you carve with the grain, you're going to get a very um, chewy steak. So you always want to carve on the opposite side of the grain. So you can see the grains are going this way. I'm going to cut this way. So I'm going to give it a couple of slices here. You can see that cook. It's got a little pink in it. If you want it more cooked, then put it on a little longer. That looks so great. Oh yeah, this is gonna be delicious. So, favorite part is the end piece because you got all that conversation there. So. And Astrid, a question that. came in for folks who are unfamiliar with kimchi. What That's is kimchi? Good. So kimchi is a fermented food made out of cabbage. Um, usually people add all kinds of different things to it. You can add carrots to it, seaweed, um, but cabbage is pretty typical. Um, it's fermented, so it's really great for your gut microbiome. So if that's something that you're interested in, increasing sort of the gut microbiome and, and just making sure that your gut is working optimally, optimally um, I recommend kimchi, things like kombucha, sauerkraut, those types of foods. So I'm really glad that you added that. Absolutely, and this our... is the vegan version. Um, I eat a lot of sauerkraut, I eat a lot of kimchi and stuff like that. I really love this brand specifically. It doesn't have any fish sauce or shrimp, uh, dried shrimp in it. Um, it's literally just fermented with a little bit of salt. Yeah. So as you can see, this is actually a nicer looking piece. You can see that cook. We're looking at a perfect mid rare there. So that is nice. Plate our steak. Astrid, if you wouldn't mind. Hit me with some sesame seeds and scallions on that steak. Yeah. As we start to finish up here, folks, if you're watching or listening and you have a question, just a reminder, info it. at projectangelheart.org. Nice. Thank so you. Good. Or yeah, you can I know. call our phone number, 303-830-0202.
and then push seven. The number's coming up on the bottom of your screen. You can also put a question into the chat box. You can also just throw some love at Chef Brett and Astrid. Let them know how much you love what they're working on tonight. Uh, we're just about to wrap Please. up. So any last questions folks have, come on through. I am actually going to build a lettuce Taco, wrap so here. <laughs> exactly. I want to build a lettuce wrap on how I would do it. Love it. Take a little bit of this kimchi as well. That's nice. Some chilies. I'm like drooling over here, you know? Yeah, and then Can't wait to eat it. scallions as well. So I would eat mine just like that, paired with the green beans and the vegetable fried rice. So Should we get Owen to come and taste? Yes, I think Owen's time to taste. Oh, Owen. yes, so we come on back. <laughs> I always know the right moment. Food's getting served. It's time to jump in the kitchen. Right. We are so fortunate to have both of you on our team and doing this. I brought this with me because this is how we serve every single one of our meals that go out our door. And the thing that is so amazing about tonight's recipe and one thing I loved about the concept of bringing our kitchen into yours is this is how we cook every day. Sure, there's there might be a little spices or a few ingredients that we trade out or modify based on someone's diet, but they all get delivered to clients in these containers. They are flash frozen in our kitchen, and then they are delivered around the state by thousands of volunteers every single year. We have many of our volunteers who are online tonight. I saw folks who help us deliver. I saw folks who help decorate bags. I saw folks who are in our kitchen every single day. It takes about 500 volunteers to get a meal from Brett's Tilt, tilt skillet out to someone's home every single week. So if you'd like to be part of that, come learn more at projectangelheart.org. We'd love for you to join us. We are also incredibly fortunate that we get to eat like this every single week here. It's a real perk of working at Project Angel Heart. But the best thing about tonight is this is what happens every day. Uh, Astrid and Brett and their teams collaborate together to make the best possible nutritious meal for folks at home living with severe illness. We couldn't do this without these two, and we couldn't do this without our Colorado community who helps us every single deal, every single day get meals out. So, Brett, you are serving up. I am not getting in the way of dinner here. <laughs> this looks amazing. I love it. Talk more. So, yeah, I just thought it would be nice. Uh, you've got your components here. You've got your uh, green beans, Szechuan green beans, um, our vegetable fried rice, and our steak. You could totally add all those together and have a complete meal. I like to pair mine with uh, uh, some other components. Um, you get some acidity and some crunch from the kimchi, some spice from the chili garlic here, and then the lettuce. I think it's fun. I have little uh, get-togethers at my house. You have family and friends over. It's just a great way for people to eat with their hands and not just use knife and fork. So, absolutely. Totally. Yeah. This is such a great summer meal, too, for a night like tonight, or maybe a great winter meal for a day like tomorrow. So, <laughs> you know, welcome to Colorado. Um, we love what you produce, what you help make happen. You've got to see the master spreadsheet that Astrid works on to get every macro, macro exactly right for the nearly 1,700 people we serve every single week, 1,700. Many of those have differentiated diets. You can take every single one of our menu items and modify it 15 different ways. We want to make sure people can eat the food we send to them. That's why this is so important. Again, if you want to be part of this and you're not already, projectangelheart.org. If you can support our meals for somebody in need, projectangelheart.org slash donate, or you can go to the Cooking Together page. There's a donate button right there. But stay in touch. We want to make sure that you can continue to enjoy our kitchen. We're going to have more of these throughout the year. I have to give one more shout out to our friends at Kaiser Permanente, who not only have they helped make happen all of our expansion across the state, they've also helped make this event tonight free for all of you who've joined. So thanks to the team at Kaiser Permanente, also a great referral of clients to us. They go above and beyond to make sure that we can get our meals out. We're really, really appreciative. Great work tonight, guys. Thank you you so put a ton much. of work into this. You should be proud. Thank you. We're going to eat, but we're not going to eat this on camera. No. Thanks, everyone, <laughs> for joining, though. Much appreciated. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. I might Bye. just take this quick opportunity to quickly plug our Food with Heart community conversation. So if you're a client watching, we do a Food with Heart community conversation every month. Um, watch for the promotional flyer in your meal bag. Um, it's a great opportunity for you to get to ask me questions and for you to learn a little bit about nutrition. So please join us. And um, yeah, thank you so much for being here. Have a great night, everyone. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good Bye. night.